You are an ass and you will always be an ass and you will end the course of your life as an ass and as far as I can tell, your life will reach its final day before you accept and realize that you are an animal. Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Hello and welcome back again. Chapter nine starts with one of Cervantes' most absurdly funny headers in which it is recounted what will now be seen. That's obvious, right? Or is it? How can one actually see what is narrated? And what if what's narrated occurs in the dark? The first line of the chapter is also ridiculous. It's exactly midnight, more or less. It was the stroke of midnight, more or less, when Don Quixote and Sancho left the hills and entered El Toboso. As it turns out, there is moonlight. The night was pretty clear. The moon is the symbol of the goddess Diana, whom we saw in the previous chapter, and with whom we now begin to associate Dulcinea. The moon also figures prominently on Islamic flags beginning in the 14th century. Note also the sound of dogs barking, punctuated by the sounds of other animals that are also symbolic in Don Quixote. Now and again, an ass brayed, pigs grunted, cats meowed. Don Quixote takes all of this as a bad omen, but he still insists Sancho guide him to Dulcinea's palace. Sancho's response is blasphemous and establishes a conflict between our heroes regarding Dulcinea's abode. By heaven, what palace am I supposed to guide you to when the place where I saw Her Highness was nothing but a tiny house? Don Quixote insists Sancho must have seen her in some apartment of her Alcazar, this Arabic term for castle appears seven times in this chapter, emphasizing the difference between the squires and the knights' perspectives on Dulcinea. Now Don Quixote sees a massive shape in the night, which he says must be Dulcinea's palace. Sancho says to guide on, but he expresses doubts as if he were St. Thomas confronted by the resurrection of Christ. That might be, although I'll believe it when I see it with my eyes and touch it with my hands. When Dulcinea's citadel turns out to be a church, we read one of the most famous lines of the novel. We've come up against the church, Sancho. Today, this is a proverb indicating the danger and futility of contradicting an intractable authority. Did you know El Toboso is famous for its enormous jars made of clay? When Sancho assumes that Don Quixote should recognize Dulcinea's house, the knight's anger extends the theme of religious orthodoxy. Come here, you heretic. Have I not told you a thousand times that in all the days of my life I have never seen the incomparable Dulcinea, that I am only in love with her according to what I've heard about her? Sancho now gets himself into trouble. Well, if you have never seen her, then neither have I. So did he lie to Don Quixote about his embassy to El Toboso in part one? Sancho recovers with hilarious absurdity. It's also the case that I only heard about seeing her and about the answer that I brought you. In which region of Spain is El Toboso found? A, Aragon, B, Andalusia, C, Castilla-La Mancha. Correct answer, C, Castilla-La Mancha. At this point, a laborer appears. There came to pass by them a man with two mules. He is singing a famous ballad, one which hints at the north-south problem of Spanish identity. A bad time you had, Frenchman, at that defeat at Rontes Valles. When Don Quixote asks for directions to Dulcinea's palace, the man explains why he does not know. I'm a stranger, and I've only spent a few days in this town serving a rich peasant. But he suggests Don Quixote contact the town's religious authorities who have a register of all the inhabitants. They have a list of everyone who lives in El Toboso. All of this begs the question, just who lived in El Toboso at the beginning of the 17th century? Some say quite a few moriscos who were relocated there after the Alpujarras War of 1568 to 1571. That might have made local priests rather anxious, no? Sancho now suggests that knight and squire retreat to a nearby woods. He offers to search for Dulcinea in the morning. Don Quixote is pleased. The advice you have just given me, I appreciate and receive most willingly. 
Sancho is relieved. Sancho was anxious to get his master out of the town so that he would not discover his lie about the response from Dulcinea that he had delivered to him in the Sierra Morena. The narrator concludes the chapter with a strange phrase. He tells us the next chapter contains events that require attention and trust, novel attention and renewed credit. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.